The race for the Oval Office reached its last lap as Republican George W. Bush maintained a razor-thin lead over his Democrat rival Al Gore. Amidst mounting allegations of voter fraud and campaign irregularities akin to the Indian elections, it was time for stock-taking. How large India looms on the horizons of the two contenders for the coveted White House hot seat may depend largely on their Asian perspective. I don't know whether George Bush sees any wider role for India. In fact, all that has been said in the foreign policy, you know, sort of outputs from his uh, people, it's just a general kind of uh, thing that India is important, but so is Pakistan. We have to engage with both kind of a thing. It hasn't really been spelt out as a major kind of a policy initiative. It's more in line with Indian view. To many, India had a marked preference for Bush, but the warmth showed by Al Gore during Prime Minister Vajpayee's recent American trip has softened New Delhi's approach. Even though he has been Bill Clinton's vice president for eight years, I think as president he will firstly want to make his own mark. And he's far more in the traditionalist mode of being a Democrat, which is that he's far more interventionist in world affairs, whether it's to do with the environment, whether it's to do with labor standards, whether it's to do with, with, with just America being far more involved with the world. The Democrats have created a kind of a system out there where they have taken certain positions vis-a-vis -vis India, Kashmir, Pakistan, the South Asian region. And there is no indication to show that Al Gore is going to move away from that. In fact, probably he will take a harder line on non-proliferation to some extent and on Kashmir and the resolution of this conflict. Asking us not to sign the CTBT by Bush and God insisting that we sign it, you know, which are the respective agendas. I don't see either of the two groups really letting the heat off where non-proliferation per se is concerned. Well, Bush has openly said that he's not really interested in the CTBT. He said that he doesn't want the Americans to test anymore, and therefore he doesn't want other countries, for example, India and Pakistan, also to test. So it's not as if Bush is not interested in the non-proliferation issue. So any permissiveness towards India on Washington's part may come with a price tag. New Delhi may have to reorient its relations with China, considering George Bush's belligerent anti-Beijing rhetoric. An Al Gore victory will hasten the completion of the anti-ballistic missile defense system, ensuring American military leverage. There is a unipolar world. America is the most important power in the, in the world. We've taken 10 years to come to that conclusion, but I think we are there now. So definitely, whether it's a Bush administration or a Gore, Gore administration, there, are, there, are, there will be differences in s nuance, in style, perhaps in substance. We have to deal with it. So in a sense, they are two sides of the same coin. Kashmir will remain an issue. There will be a slightly uh, a shift towards Pakistan if Bush comes in. Uh, Gore will continue this cold shouldering of Pakistan for some time to come. So there will be slight emphasis uh, kind of uh, changes, but I don't think that there is going to be any major shift in policy, American policy towards this region. As the end game draws near, India may be comfortable with one mindset. Whatever the outcome, the United States will follow policies that will further augment the inevitable drive towards a multipolar world.